I have been to various parts of the world. No matter which country I visit, the people express the same wish, I want to be happy. This is a desire common to people all over the globe. However, when it comes to Buddhism, the religion which can fulfill that desire, many of them complain that not enough study material is translated, or that it is difficult to grasp. I always reply to them, the only language I speak is Japanese. I don't know how to say sugar in German or French, but I've discovered that sugar in any country is sweet. I didn't have to learn how to say it in this language or that in order to discover its sweetness. Whether you understand the language, it is an indisputable fact that sugar is sweet wherever you go. Translation is, of course, essential and greater effort is now being made in that direction. However, Nichiren Daishonin's Buddhism is a universal teaching. Whatever language you happen to speak, the Gohonzon will give you benefits, no matter in which country you live. I once went to a certain country on a guidance tour. There a woman member came to me to seek advice. She did not seem to have practiced her faith earnestly. She had secretly saved up a part of the household allowance, but her husband had discovered it, and a bitter quarrel had ensued. A headstrong woman, she had not spoken to her husband, done the laundry or prepared meals for an entire year. In the meantime, she began to chant a million Dai Moku, single-mindedly praying for a divorce. I met her the day after she had completed her goal of a million Dai Moku. I have heard that in this religion no prayer will go unanswered, she said. So why hasn't mine been answered? I told her that prayers which will my one happy are fulfilled, but that those which would make one unhappy are not. What would happen if all wishes, both well and ill intended, were answered? I asked her, you say you have chanted a million daimoku for a divorce, but how many daimoku have you chanted for your husband to take faith? She replied that she had chanted none. Is it because you have a bad husband that you are suffering? I asked her, no it isn't. It's because you have the karma to suffer on account of your husband. You say you have a bad husband, but you don't seem to realize that you haven't exactly been a good wife to him, either. Then I told her about the Ikigami brothers who lived in Nichiren Daishonin's day. Their father strongly opposed their faith. In that respect, he was certainly a bad father. But why did the brothers have to undergo such fierce opposition? According to the Gosho, it was in order that they could change their destiny. Their father's opposition was, in this sense, a great help to them. People complain about their parents or spouses, but they themselves are the ones who are miserable. Buddhism views everything from the standpoint of the individual himself. If you are unhappy, it is because you yourself made some cause for that unhappiness, whether in this lifetime or a previous one. However, when people are complaining about others, they aren't considering that they themselves may have created some bad karma in the past. That's why they don't even think of apologizing to the Gohonzon for that, but merely go on resenting their spouses or parents. Finally, I said to her, apologize to the Gohonzon for your past conduct, and pray for your husband to take faith in true Buddhism. On the following morning, the woman came to the airport in a hired car to see me off. Then, you very much for your guidance last night, she said. When I went home, kneaded before the Gohonzon and chanted Daimoku, I started crying and couldn't stop. You have been a selfish wife and an inconsiderate mother, I said to her. If you practice your faith earnestly, you will not only become a good wife and a wonderful mother, you will also grow into an indispensable asset for the movement of Kosen Rufu. When you go home, apologize to your children, too. She looked embarrassed. I have to apologize to my children, too? She asked. She repeated the question two more times. I told her that any parent would apologize to his child if he stepped on its foot by mistake. Certainly, 
no parent would refuse to do so simply because it was his own child. The woman said that she found it difficult to apologize to her children. So I said to her, if you chant Dai Moku to the Gohanzin and look at yourself, you will find yourself saying, I'm sorry, to them quite naturally. She promised me she would strive for her human revolution so that she could report her positive growth to me. After I returned to Japan, I received a letter from her. She said that as soon as she came home from the airport, she prepared a meal and set it on the table, but her husband would not even touch it. Apparently, she had not yet said, I'm sorry, to him. How could any husband accept a meal without an apology from a wife who had not spoken to him for an entire year she had not yet apologized to her children, she wrote, but when she told them all of what I had said to her, their attitude toward her changed 180 degrees. The letter was filled with her determination to make a fresh start in faith. This example shows how important it is to pray sincerely to the Gohanzin so that we can discern our destiny from a correct perspective, with the awareness that our own reformation is the key to solving all problems.